but welcome to Maxim Grunin Art. This is Maxim Grunin, and let's paint uh, a small painting, a landscape painting. Here's the finished result. Here's the finished painting. It's a miniature, roughly sized three and a half inches tall and uh, six or seven inches wide. Here's my palette of uh, primaries and black and white acrylics on a piece of cardboard. And there's a palette knife. There are a couple more canvases primed with the abstract background to start laying the trees in. And... Mm, what is uh, what's the what is the main thing here? I think a uh, really strong contrast between light and dark is the first uh, thing that would grab attention from a little further away, and then there is um, I am introducing quite a bit of um, um, look, detail and attention to detail. I am um, setting up objects to be in perspective by having them vary in sizes with closest objects being taller and bigger and objects further away being smaller. There's really a lot going on in a little painting. Here's the starting stage where I have a, a primed twice or a little bit more than twice a primed board so that it's really nice and uh, sealed and uh, really opaque and it's uh, the white is gonna give all of the paints paints are are slightly transparent so the white is gonna give everything um, pronounced uh, color contrast and uh, I'm building a sense of light and dark into the little canvas where further back is set up to be lighter with uh, like a um, tunneling kind of effect and then I built um, transition from that towards the foreground where things are getting a little colder in color with purples blues and greens and uh, gray and it is time to start bringing in the elements, the smaller elements that also exist in within the frame. And my strategy is to go from bigger overall uh, to smaller particular in step by step type of fashion. So here's my background, and now I am setting up the objects, the objects of trees. I uh, have a, a distinct foreground with a big, uh, a complex tree, and then distinct midground with also fairly complex smaller trees, and then as as these trees become smaller and smaller and less visible in the far away, in the far back, I reduce their sizes and their complexity. I also want to craft beautiful and uh, uh, diverse shapes for the trees. I uh, take time to observe them in uh, real life go out or drive around or during hikes and just photograph and a whole bunch of landscape and becoming keen and interested in describing the a little more complexity about the subject that I'm painting so tree the trees they have so many wonderful diagonals curves um uh, they have a form, very diverse capacity for visual form, and I am wanting to bring some of that notion in. As I am doing that, I'm also setting up mid-tone 
which is slightly lighter area within trees which is shown right now as a gray purple and the light is coming from about the middle top of the painting so a bit of light is going from the middle out towards the left and left and towards the right and i am kind of uh, putting visual notes here's where the light is gonna be here's where the mid-tone is i also uh, started to map out um, see-through areas between the trees in the far back i am wanting to uh, increase the complexity of uh, branches and information detail information in the foreground that's uh, right now represented by several dark lines uh, and before i do that i would like to really complete the see-through areas mm, it is not always possible to land everything just uh, the way i want it in the first abstract code that sets up the background so now i can kind of dig in and i want to bring a variety of, uh, of yellow ochre yellows orange um, a variety of color ranging from brown reds orange oranges yellow reds greens um gray purples so really really dig into the backgrounds um luminosity and color information and uh, i've done that and now i'm digging back into the these branches in the foreground that are kind of overlapping are superimposed against the trees uh, this is kind of like maybe from the trees or the bushes that are right in front of us so there's a bit of a lace uh, of beautiful expressive uh, thinner branches and uh, leaves or dried leaves dry leaves it could be a little bit in the fall this landscape and now i've uh, gone back to some background trees the very far back ones there, there's a there is a movement from foreground to the background through uh, several shelves uh, several planes of further and further and further etc so when i see the really further back area i want to increase its effect by making the trees very light in those areas giving them maybe even cooler and grayer like colder temperature colors like blue and gray and try to show that they recede and now i am bringing some um, color into into the leaves into the plant branches in the front as well as with the same color i would like to go over a few other areas where that that uh, red brown can exist which is where the sunlight is hitting the trees and they kind of glow with a little bit more red that's where i placed that so this is i've i went and i worked on all of the shapes of the trees some more definitely uh between the recording shots so to get them uh, more organized more carefully designed to soften their edges to give everything complexity um, and there's a little bit more of uh, lighter areas that, that are coming in to sit on top of the branches in the foreground so that the, the branches have 3d properties and pop forward a little bit I still think that uh, the background is not complex enough where the light is coming in from the sky from the sun and down onto the ground it's a little faded it's a little um, too old, like too similar in places so now I am really going back to complexify to um, design more careful elements uh, like here is a uh, reflection maybe it's um 
it's a uh, slightly rainy that day it was uh, rain was happening that day and there is a wetness on the ground that contributes to reflectiveness of the ground and uh, this is like a playful area to 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 really explore just um, how does reflection work and so i really invested and energy and i gone and tried to show a bit of a like a liquid kind of reflective look to things and uh, notice i kind of popped um more saturated orange yellow ochre and white and highlights in into some of the ground mid-ground and background i popped some of that bright color to create uh, color a uh, contrast of warm and cool between the the colder blue or gray or purpler uh, colors and so a little bit juicier a little bit uh, sunnier a little bit more colorful um, solution is kind of wanting to come into the painting and that's how i perceive it and so once I'm there, I want to adjust the surface a little bit more. I, I usually step back a lot at this point and kind of let the painting sit in front of me and uh, just keep noting what is wanting to be improved, changed and how. So I would make a few notes and uh, now that like after many years of experience i don't need to write these things down but i used to write uh, little notes in my sketchbook saying mm, cut back that tree replace add etc so here is some of the finishing um, routines which is uh, highlights and foreground tree i really want to portray it i really want to spend a little more time crafting its appearance its identity to really dig in and build a form um, that's really beautiful and uh, meaningful to me and a little bit less of that action of that process would be on mid-ground trees and then a little by little the painting gets a, a finished touches and it is done uh, thanks for joining my video thanks for uh, taking a look for joining visiting supporting asking questions i wish everybody a lot of creativity and please use uh, my demo uh, as inspiration and do um, do projects do art projects do this art project it's a, a fairly easy one and it's a, a easy on the eye as well it's a lot of fun mm -hmm.